الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated from Mecca to Medina before entering Medina he stopped on the outskirts in Quba and built the very first masjid in Islam, Masjid Quba. That was the very first thing that he did before he even entered the city of Medina. Then after that, he proceeded on, on to Medina. And after entering and being welcomed by the inhabitants of Medina, the very first project that he undertook was to build his masjid. And after he built it, he built the apartments of his wives around it. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum all built their houses around the masjid. And then from that day onwards, the masjid became the focal point of that community. The masjid became the center. It became everything in the lives of the Sahaba. It was from the masjid that they learned their deen. It was from the masjid that they spread their deen. It was the masjid that was everything for them. The masjid was where they went to not only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the masjid was where they settled their disputes. And so the masjid was a court. It was a town hall. It was a school. It was a place of shelter, a place of refuge. It was a place to go when the entire world came crashing down on you and you had nowhere else to go. But now let, our, let us ask ourselves, does that same meaning exist in our lives today? 1400 years later. What does a masjid mean to us? Do we hold it as dearly as that first generation held it? And so my dear brothers and sisters, the answer to that question is found in your sentiments and your feelings over the last several weeks and last several months when the masjid was closed and its doors were shut how did you feel? if you felt that state of grief missing the masjid then insha'Allah ta'ala it's a good sign the Prophet said 
telling us about seven people who will be shaded by the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a day in which there will be no shade except His. And among the seven that He mentioned, وَرَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسَاجِ A man whose heart is attached to the masjid. In another narration, every time he leaves, he longs to go back to it. And so my dear brothers and sisters, many have felt that their ibadah went down, their iman went down, their relationship with Allah went down as a, as a result of being distanced from the masjid. Why? What is it that makes the masjid so special? What makes the masjid so special is that it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and doesn't belong to any human being. It's a structure, it's a place that was built for Allah alone and for nobody else. And that's why in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attributes the masjid to Himself and doesn't leave it open without attributing to anyone. He doesn't attribute it to anyone, but rather He attributes it to Himself. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ and the masajid belong to Allah. So do not worship, do not call upon anyone besides Him. In houses that Allah has permitted for His name to be remembered for these masajid to be raised, elevated, and for his name to be remembered, and for him to be glorified in these masajid, day in, day out. Rijal, لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار. In it are men who are not distracted from the remembrance of Allah by trade, by buying and selling, by business. They are not distracted by that from the remembrance of Allah and establishing salah and giving in zakah. And they fear a day in which the hearts and the eyes will tremble in fear. إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةِ وَلَمْ يَخْشَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ The only ones deserving of maintaining, what does Allah say? The masajid of Allah are none but those who believe in Allah in the last day, establish their salah, give in their zakah. And they don't fear anyone except Allah. And so my dear brothers and sisters, now that our masajid have reopened, Let us, let us attach ourselves to them, for we have no excuse anymore. Just like we made our homes into a masjid over these last several months, it is time now to make the masjid your home. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim, wa nafa'ani wa iyyakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa al-dhikr al-hakim, aqulu ma tasma'oon, wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa li sa'il al-muslimin min kul ذنب خطيئة فاستغفروه إنه كان غفارا وتوبوا إليه إنه كان توابا الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله 
الداعي إلى رضوانه صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وإخوانه وخلانه ومن سار على نهجه واقتفى أتره واستن بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله حق التقوى وراقبوه في السر والنجوى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون My dear brothers and sisters As the lockdown slowly and gradually comes to an end And as the restrictions slowly and gradually begin to become lifted, there are several lessons that we have learned over these last several months of being in this lockdown. Among these lessons is first and foremost, that everything is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He controls this universe. He controls every single thing that happens in this world. And so when we human beings thought that we had reached the pinnacle of our human advancement in science and technology, all of a sudden, our world came crashing down to a standstill. And we realized that everything is in the hands of Allah alone. And that He is not questioned about what He does, but rather whatever Allah does is for a higher wisdom. لا يسألوا عما يفعل وهم يسألون Don't question Allah. Allah is not to be questioned, but rather worry about yourself because you are the one who will be questioned by Allah on the Day of Judgment. We also learned that Islam taught us everything that we need to know in every situation, in every circumstance. And so we learned how Islam taught us about cleanliness, for example, 1400 years ago. Things that the Prophet ﷺ taught us that are today being encouraged by health professionals. We learned the importance of bonding with our family, being at home and spending time with the family in a day and age when people have become disconnected from their family members and those closest to them. We have learned that we can change our bad habits. Yes, many of us who thought that we could never change some of our bad habits, we were able to do so in these last several months. We learned that there are many things that we are used to having in our lives that we could do without. We learn that many things that we spend so much money on in our lives, whether it be material things, whether it be material temporary enjoyment, we found that we could do without these things. And that these are the things, the extras in this dunya, that, w that the extras in this dunya that won't benefit you in the very least in the akhirah. We learned, my dear brothers and sisters, that being distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sins are a reason for having blessings taken away from us. And that the only way to have blessings to remain with us is by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seeking His forgiveness, turning to Him in repentance. 
There was once a student who was told by his teacher that if you were traveling and you came across a shepherd with his dog barking at you, how would you make the, the dog to start barking? He said, I would pick up a stone and throw it at the dog. He said he'll go chase after the stone and then he'll come back barking at you. So the student said, so what should I do? He said, go to the shepherd and ask him to take control of his dog. And if you do that, then that's it. You'll be able to proceed. And so in this is a lesson for us today. That although many of us are worried about material means of protection, from disease and viruses, we have forgotten that the ultimate protection lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, turning to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we want this pandemic to cease and to come to an end, then we have to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance and realizing our shortcomings. Inna Allah la ma bi Allah does not change the state of a people until they themselves change and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure those who are ill. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon those who have passed away. Allahumma aghfir lil muslimin wal muslimat wal mu'minin wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم ادفع عنا وارفع عنا الوباء اللهم ادفع عنا وارفع عنا الوباء والبلاء والزلازل والمحن وسوء الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإنتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم